Bit. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here. The voice of hardcore boxing. You like that one? You all keep sending me them emails. The voice of hardcore boxing. <laughs> well, fight week and I'm already stressed out. Dressed out to death. I've uh, I, I watched the boxing at the weekend, and I have had a. I've just had a little bit of a break and recovered from Friday night. Uh, you can't burn the candle at both ends, can you? When you're approaching 50 years of age. Uh, I'm just on my way to a meeting now, second meeting at date, fight week, and I'm stressed out. Look at stress spots on my head, can you see them? They look like three, snooker, three red snooker balls, don't they? I'm not like Eddie Hearn. You've got everybody doing everything for him while he's swanning about with a perfect life, trust me. I, uh, I'm a stress head, me, proper stress head. But sometimes you can say I've took too much on me what I do. No. I don't think I have. I just think that uh, I want things done to be done right and you know there's more important things in my life than my channel, if you know what I mean. So, but other than that, I'm okay. I'm, uh, I'm uh, just going to get on my way now. Uh, I watched boxing at weekend. And I'm, I'm going to go through all main stuff here with Dennis when I get up to office now. I'm probably going to go for a bite to eat. I think it's my turn to pay, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, it was nice to see Smido on Friday. He's a lovely lad. I've uh, I've been to his house in Wigan, uh, Smido. So I went and seen him. Uh, nice kid keeps his head in good shape. Trains hard. His missus trains hard as well. They're both hard trainers. That's good. You're on the same wavelength, aren't you? Can you imagine endorphin levels floating about in Smido's house. Jesus, have about ten kids at this rate, won't they? <laughs> but he's a lovely kid, and I class him as a pal. And one of my peers, uh, so because he knows he's boxing and he's as hardcore as anybody else, just like me, you know, going to watch fights abroad and things like that. It's uh, boxing's very unforgiving if you're a boxing fan, very, very, very unforgiving. You always feel I don't know, I always tend to feel a little bit short-changed. Well, it's Percy Sugden's house, that over in Coronation Street. Uh, I always feel a little bit short-changed with boxing, but... I'm going to give an opinion on Tyson Fury fight now, before anybody else does. I noticed that his dad said some comments. Uh, do I know John Fury? Yep. I first met John Fury. In 1989, 19, 18, 19, 19, 19, I think I was about 18 when I first met John Fury, fought Neil Malpaz from Doncaster. And I went to that fight. Neil, Pal, Neil Malpaz is a good pal of mine. We gave his son, Connor Malpaz, a trial. And I think he was caught in between wanting to do cage fighting. MMA, white collar and boxing. I don't, I don't know what happened. Dennis offered him a, a deal to go six months. Stay six months with us, amateur. You're only 18 year old, and if you're any good, we'll go pro. But you've got, you can't just turn up, have a trial, 
get get sparring with one of our professionals. He sparred Dan West. I thought he did all right. Dennis said he were raw, and he, he'd be picked off in pros. And he said he wants him to the six month in amateurs to have a look at him and stick it out. Now, what a lot of people don't understand with Dennis is this, right? He don't put any of that arse licking, right? And he also, he isn't just going to say, oh yeah, you've sparred today with a professional boxer and you've done well. You're 18 year old. He ain't just going to say, oh here's a lump of money, you sign with us. He, he, he don't work like that with Den. He'll put you in amateurs six months and if you'll go up to that gym and do your training three times a week or five nights a week and you'll get bus home, he'll, Dennis will look at that and think, this kid is a trier, a bit like me. I'm a trier, aren't I, but the size of them on my head, I hope they're gone for Friday. I'll look a right weapon, won't I? I'll look a right helmet. Uh, but Connor, the problem Connor had got is He'd had a couple of cage fights and won them. Google him, Conor Malpaz. C O double N O R M A L P A double S. Now, Conor had had a couple of cage fights, a couple of white collars, iced them all. I mean, iced them. And he were, he, he were getting stuck into people at sparring now. Steffi Ball said he didn't think he were that good. We, we thought he were good. But his opinions vary, don't they? Obviously, people like Steffi and Dennis are going to look at things boxing close up and they're going to spot things that I'm not going to spot because I'm not as experienced as them. But Dennis said, oh, I want to see him in amateur six months and have a look at him. Whereas I was saying, sign him, Dennis, sign him, Dennis. So I was a bit of a cheerleader, wasn't I, about two or three years ago. Do you know what I mean? She was all right. But, uh, Monday morning, eh? Uh, but, uh, he didn't come back, he didn't come back to the gym, but he turned up at a show a, co a couple of weeks after us, seen him at a show, we had a bit of chat, a bit of a chat, but he'd already gone and got his centre manager, and they'd been and got him a, a brand new Audi, they leased him a brand new Audi, so, I think what had happened is, maybe, Maybe that might take you hunger away, you think you've arrived before you have, I don't know. I don't know, I don't, it's hard to... It's a bit like Audley Harrison, isn't it? He was given a million pound contract and then he was making 100 grand a show for his first 10, sh 10 fights. And it's a bit like winning Pop Idol in reverse, isn't it? How can you be hungry? I don't, I don't know what happened to Connor, but I do know that he did Four or five rounds, maybe six, four or five rounds on pads at three minutes ago with John Fuchs, and then he did four rounds sparring with Dan West. And we said to Fuki, "What do you think?" And Fuki said, "He's all right, but uh, you know, maybe maybe it might be best that we have him in amateur six months because the talent was there. A bit like David Allen, really talented, but it's how you apply yourself, isn't it?" it they're not all going to be like... How can I explain it? They're not all going to be like Mayweather, are they? I mean, Robert McCracken tells a good story about Mayweather. But when he was out in Vegas... He was out in Vegas at top rank gym. And Mayweather... He, Mayweather was one of them fighters that used to come and do three sessions. He, he obviously used to do his run, but he'd do his run at night. Mayweather used to turn up in the afternoon and do a two hour full on session, non-stop, full pelt. And that'd be it, then he'd do a run at night. That'd be it, that's our Mayweather. But he always came and did his work, no matter what, he put the graft in. Now, my message to all you fighters out there, you have to put your graft in. Uh, I tell a good story about that day at Carl Frotcher's house. Uh, and he, uh, this was for the first Groves fight. He was nipping off. You know, you can have all the trappings of wealth, and you can be sat there having a crack with me, having a cup of tea. But then you've got to leave your beautiful missus, your beautiful house, and your kids, and you've got to go do your session. You have to put them sessions in the bank. There's no shortcuts to success. 
Um, I think that maybe them outside influences would, would probably affect Connor, but still young enough to turn it around. So Connor, if you're watching this, give me a ring. You've got my number, pal. Uh, get your dad to give me a ring. But getting back to Tyson Fury, yeah, I've met his dad. Is that sorry, his dad? To John Fury, yeah, I've met John. He's a straight talker. He uh, he calls a pig a pig and uh, a garden fork a garden fork. And what he said, I don't know. Is he arsed after for, for the sake of one camp because? Didn't everybody say that Ben Davidson were going to be trainer at year and best trainer at future? I don't know, but this is how I look at it, right? That article Tyson did, the Rolling Stone, what did he say? With 20 stone, 27 stone 10, and he's 18 stone 4. So what's that? Nine and a half stone he's lost, has he? Nine and a half stone. I don't know, he says ten and a half, doesn't he? Whatever, he's lost a lot of weight, but he was losing that weight when he was with Peter every camp. His career was stop, start, stop, start, wasn't it? With a lot of dates. What he's got now, he's had five fights with Frank Warren. Uh, five fights in, in how long? 14 months, is it? 15 months? Five fights in 15 months. That's an average in a fight every three months. He banked a lot of money. He may never fight again, Tyson. Now he may never fight again. Uh, what is Dad out of order saying that? Well, technically, you shouldn't really air your you shouldn't air your things like that, should you? I get a bit of sun on these massive spots on my head. Uh, in fact, I'll leave that on and cover them up. I'm embarrassed. Three plums on me head. I get accused of taking all sorts of drugs on and now. It's real stress related. Stress related. Look at them, man. Jesus. Like I've been shot in Nam. I've been shot in Vietnam. Or Gulf War. Look at them. One, two, three. Jesus, I'm not, as if I'm not ugly enough. Uh, so, John Fury's let rip. Now, whatever you say, if you comment to it, I notice n there's a lot of people in the boxing industry talking about it, and nobody dare say anything, dare they? Well, I'll say something. This is how I look at it. I don't know Ben Davidson from Adam. I don't know him from Adam. Uh, he worked for MTK. Tyson's an MTK fighter. Good on him, but I don't know him from Adam. He talks a good game, doesn't he? I've noticed he he likes to sit down and do sit downs with various media outlets whenever he can. There's no wrong with that, is there? Do I want him on my channel? No, I don't want him on my channel. No. Do I think he's a good trainer? I don't know. He might be one of them cheerleader types, you know, like Kevin Keegan, motivational guy. He's obviously struck up a friendship with Tyson, so that's good, isn't it? He struck up a friendship with him, and they've got the weight off, but for people to start running around, like that Asgi, people like that, and saying that he, he, he's best trainer in the world and all that. Nobody's best trainer in the world. Nobody. If he trained me, could he get me a world title shot? No. Boxers make the, the trainer. But the main thing is consistency now. What has he done as a trainer with any. What is he, what is he doing with Isaac Lowe? I noticed Rob Tebbert questioned him, mentioned that. What, is, what has Ben Davidson done for, for Isaac Lowe? We see it's first guy that you could say that's not multi-talented. He hadn't pulled any trees up with Isaac Lowe, has he? Billy Joe Saunders and Tyson Fury are elite fighters. Elite. Skills to burn. 
They're not massive punchers, but they don't take punches, do they? And Jimmy Tibbs has an old saying that if you don't get hit, you win every fight. Because you can hit them, but if they can't hit you, that's the name of the game. Hit and don't get hit. Now, as far as I'm concerned, as I'm just saying to you now, Ben Davidson hasn't done anything. He hasn't done anything, has he? He's not done anything with anybody yet. Now, when he's done something, come and talk to me. Come and talk to me. I don't. I'm not on about Tyson Fury beating Tom Swartz and having a life and death with Otto Wally. I mean, that was life and death to me. That. Are you telling me that was life and death? Because if that were Frotch in there. If that were Frotch in there, other night, people would be saying it was life and death. They'd be saying, Porky Frotch has just gone life and death. We had to wall in. So as far as I'm concerned, Fury is just for in a life and death. Life and death. When he went over to that doctor, he knew the game were up. Now, if it were a championship fight, it would have been different. But it weren't a championship fight. Well, it, oh, you've got you fairies who were going on about Laniel. Well, if that Laniel meant anything, they'd have pulled him out, wouldn't they? But they had to keep going and say, yeah, I can see out my eye. He's saying he couldn't see out of it, and I don't think he could see out of it. The fight should have been stopped. It should have been a TKO to Otto Wallin. The reason it wasn't stopped is because the physician at the side of the ring is the pet physician for Bob Arum, top rank. Nobody on Twitter or in the boxing industry will come out and say that because they don't want pulling up or anything. They, do, they all want to work with Frank Warren and they don't want to piss any of Tyson's team off, but me, I'm not bothered. So I'm just going to tell it as I see it. Go and watch Paul McCloskey against Amir Khan and you'll know about power and what power means. For example, Amir Khan, he's, well, it, it were no good in them days after six rounds. If Paul McCloskey could have got him into later rounds, Matchroom could have had a world champion. Barry Hearn did his nut. Barry Hearn did his nut. Paul McCloskey had a toddy little cut. And what did that physician do? He stopped the contest. Once the referee referred it over, he stopped the contest. Now that referee did his job, Tony Weeks. I don't think he's a good referee. He let Andre Ward get away with murder against Kovalev. But he obviously knew that that fight needed stopping, but he didn't have the bottle to stop it himself. So what he did, he referred it to the physician and he went no, because he knew if they stopped that fight, Bob Arum had millions and millions and millions of pounds invested. There would have been a laughing stock. Tyson just had to bite down on his gum shield and get through it. Now you've got to give him credit, the man has a heart as big as a lion. Lions in the camp. He is a lion, a warrior, a Spartan. He's got a big heart, massive heart, just like Anthony Yard. He didn't bottle it, did he, like Dirrell, Andre Dirrell and uh, Victor Ortiz. When the going got tough, they got going, didn't they? Tyson Fury didn't do that. He beat down on his gum shield and got stuck into it and it was a rough, tough, rugged fight. And you've got to give Tyson Fury credit. But Ben Davidson is up in front of the jury. What are you giving the right instructions? Well, I don't know. I've not been a professional fighter. I'm only going on what John Fury's saying. He's an ex-professional fighter. And he's a BT Sport pundit. From what I'm hearing, and they're having him on again, they think he's brilliant. Is John Fury the new Teddy Atlas? Well, people are saying yes, and they want more straight talking. So, or is John Fury trying to be controversial just to get his set on TV? Maybe, maybe he is. I don't know. I don't know. But this is how I look at it. Tyson Fury can't punch for Toffee. Never has been able to. He 
can knock me out. He's not a big puncher. He's saying he's a big puncher. No. He looked like a big puncher though, didn't he, against Tom Swartz, but it's Tom Swartz, isn't it? What we can judge Tom Swartz and what he does in his career from now on. Otto Wallin is a southpaw. Tyson's not keen about fighting southpaws. Trust me, I know this. There's things I know that a lot of people don't. And Tyson Fury is not comfortable against southpaws. Why? How do I know that? Well, just from things I hear. Plus the fact that they've not the Lewis Ortiz fight back in, back in the day. They didn't want to fight Lewis Ortiz. So, they could have fought Lewis Ortiz when they fought Christian Aimer. Well, they didn't, did they? Why not? Christian Aimer's not. Christian Aimer is he's going to bring us about as much to the table as uh, Lewis Ortiz, but Lewis Ortiz would better win, wouldn't he? Now, Tyson didn't want to fight him. Why is that? Cuban, southpaw, skilled, big puncher. Now, they say Otto Wallen's a big puncher, but he didn't show me that he was a big puncher. He showed me that he were a rough, tough, rugged. And Tyson didn't show me that he's stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet. Like, like, that's what people have been saying. Maybe well, we're going to cut, uh, what's his name, into an Italian sausage, one, eh? Bianetta. I don't know, I mean, you've got these Tyson Fury fanatics. Fanatics. Shout out to... I forgot his name now, there's a guy who always comments, he's always first up, so you've got to give him his credit. He's a dedicated Tyson fan, but he is fanatical. He's the first up to give an opinion on my channel. Oasis1, Oasis underscore one, Oasis, at Oasis underscore one underscore, I think, is he? Poor dear summer. anyway, he's a fanatic, but... I noticed he said on Twitter that Tyson won every round. Are you having a laugh, mate? I had it 115, 113. A lot of them rounds were shared, in my opinion. People say you can't get shared rounds. Well, I can, and I do. 115, 113, Tyson Fury. Squeaked home. He squeaked home. What is he doing here? You made a right mess of that, mate, haven't you? Jesus. Squeaky bum time for Tyson. Now, Tyson didn't come out for a press conference, did he? You know why? We were going to get a shell of him, wasn't he? We were going to set about him, so he looked to me like he bottled it. Yeah, he can have any, he was having his stitches and that. Look, if a fighter's having his stitches, what they do, they say, look, you wait. He may not. He wait while he's had his stitches done. Then you go out. Now, the fact that Tyson didn't come out to the presser after winning the fight, that to me shows weakness. That's my opinion. Don't forget to leave a comment about that. That shows weakness. He looked weak on the night. Now, all you people who support Tyson, be happy he got the win. But as far as I'm concerned, he is a shell of a man that beat Vladimir Klitschko. A shell of a man. And I think now it's looking like Tyson is on is on the slide. They could put as much spin as they want on it. He is on the slide now. Big time. Big time on the slide. Uh, let's have a look. Dennis is in. This is what I did on Monday, but I've deleted it by accident on my phone because I am a plant pot. Michelle's in. And what we're doing it today. Can't you understand it? Girl, you know how much I care It's not the way I planned it no, no. You got away now I feel How good it was to me Do you know what I've started doing now? I've started leaving my car running when I pull up Do you know why? Because there's something to do with turbo, isn't it? You have to let it settle Frank told me that, Frank Smith Alexander O'Neill. If 
See where I'm going then. I'm blind man. I'm blind man, lately. The hell, Den's had his car. Look at the state of Den's wheels. Look at them. Look at that. Look. Look at that, man. Look at the scratches on it as well. Look. No, I'll cast them out. Den's not bothered, is he? Den is not bothered. Russell. Hello. Yeah, what? Okay. Leon Spinks. Then you try it Okay, Clint and bad boy. Guess who's on phone, Russ? Who? It's only AJ. AJ Hobson. AJ Hobson, eh? AJ Hobson on patrol. How are you doing, AJ? One second, I'll put you on now, speaker. Wait one second, how do you do this? Yeah. You need some AJ? No, to knock you then. Keep on trucking, Porky, keep on trucking. How are you doing, AJ? Alright, how are you? What are you on with? No, I'm just in office. Oh. I, uh, I've got a new number, AJ. I'll, uh, I'll give, I'll tell you. Ah! <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna do again a month now, 90,000. 90,000? Yes, 90,000 a month now. Fucking hell, fire. Fucking big league, innit? It's gone from cost. If we keep it up, yeah, if we keep this to what we've had last few weeks. Yeah, yeah it's brilliant. No, I always watch your most super well. Bob. Good man, thank you very much. Keep Good. it up. Get thank you. Bell, we'll catch up. How are we doing anyway? Is all, everything alright, AJ? Yeah, yeah, it's all good. It's family alright and that. It's going whenever you come up with you. Let's come and have a cup of tea with me. I will. I'll what about get him on, get him on channel on, uh, I'll get him on, on yeah. Thursday for Thursday, Wayne. Yeah, for Wayne, yeah. Is he coming Wayne? He's coming to Wayne, AJ. Yeah, I'll come to Wayne. Yeah, it's just the back of your yard, isn't it? Your scrap yard. G, G Casino. No, G, 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 G Casino now. Yeah, I'll, I'll come and see Come and see us on Thursday, and AJ, and I'll get you on, yeah. Yeah, so you mentioned him the other day in that video, didn't you? Yeah, I did. You mentioned AJ. What video? He did a video the other day and you mentioned AJ and who else did you mention? AJ and somebody else you mentioned. Where's it? We need AJ. AJ. Oh, and uh, in Chris Smedley. Oh. Chris Smedley. Oh, oh, this is you and Chris are fella. I, don't like I am him. fella. He's just a fucking idiot. But like, he says uh, we need. AJ back in boxing as well. Yeah, we need a, we need characters, AJ. We need you back. Oh, thank you, pal. Somebody cares about that. Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Dennis needs your yeah. input. Yeah, it's nice. They're fucking Alice slags everybody else, so that must be fucking privileged. I told him what we're having on show on Friday, Russ, so... That's it, so we're all right now. Oh, we're all right now. Don't you... like the puppy master, Russ. <laughs> Russ, you interrupted him. We're just going to tell me we're on the order. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, I was getting up. <laughs> Alright then. Alright then. I'll see you Thursday. Alright, take care then. Alright, love. Ta-ra. Take care. See you later, Rusty. See you, mate. Take care. All the best, pal. Ta-ra. I'll be honest. crack straight into this then, these questions, and then get Sorry, off someone to eat. Yeah, starving. Where's Michelle? She, where's Michelle? She's not in today. Yes, yeah, she did. She's in the office. 
look at them on my head then. What are they? <sighs> stress boy, or stress I think, I don't know. Fucking drugs. <laughs> you old man. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And with me today I've got legendary promoter and manager from Sheffield, the one and only Dennis Hobson aka Ron Lyle. How are you doing Ron? Serious. You're looking well. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. You're looking, you look like what footballers wear, you know like Ace David, Ace Carlton Palmer, they wear all this kind of thing, yeah, don't they? Smooth. Cool. Can I actually pull it off like you? No, he's got a big bay window now, and Has he? Yeah. <laughs> he's, smattered, he's swallowed a couple of footballs. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, we'll get straight into it. No messing about, and then we'll go for something to eat. Uh, straight in. Morning. Tyson Fury. Yeah. Did you watch the fight, Dennis? No. You didn't watch it? No. What? Is that because it was pay per view? Um, no, I was um, out with a family and I seen clips of it. Um, it didn't majorly excite me the fight, but obviously I like watching Tyson anyway because he's a character and I respect what he's what he's achieved. So um, I've, you know, when when people's at the top of the game, I respect I respect anybody at the top of the game. So, yeah. um, but no, it didn't it didn't really excite me the fight, but obviously they were drama and I've seen bits of it and obviously a terrible terrible cut. Oof. Um, oh, what were his cuts, man? He was a Mexican guy, wasn't it, or some, I forgot his name, but he did a good job, didn't he? Because he, he got it together by the ninth round, didn't he? But then it kept opening up as the rounds were progressing, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, so he couldn't do any better with it, could he? Hopefully he's got a good plastic surgeon on it, like I had when I um, when Ricky fought in Sheffield. Yeah, what did you surgeon. have that night? We had um, Alamshire Hospital waiting for a plastic surgeon, but he got Mick, Mick the rope. Mick the Rub Williamson. Yeah, he's one of the top guys. Him, Kerry Casey. Yeah. So I've got him. The main guys. Uh, what they? Sorry, Ricky had got him in with his cuts, man. But I'd got. Uh, I'd, over, I'd pre arranged uh, a plastic surgeon in case he got a bad cut, and he got two bad cuts. And so, the the secret is not just to have something stitched up, just like some kids do when they get cut. If it's if the bad cuts like uh, Tyson got the other night. The, there's layers and muscle underneath the, the you know, the eye, the eyelid and stuff like that. And if you, if they're not put back together properly, then they can they can heal, lump it, and, and then little slice punch or whatever, and just open up straight away. So uh, hopefully he's had it done properly, so it won't affect his rest of his career. Right. Uh, what did you think about his performance, Dan? Um, like his dad was saying, it was a bit flat, but. And he's, I think John's going on about uh, his trainer and, you know, people have bad day at offices and I, I don't know the ins and outs of his, and his, of his training. I don't know the ins and outs of his training and what, what, what they're doing. Um, you know so, what his dad's going on about, yeah, him having no strength and that. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing, but his, his dad will have more of a... Uh, no, the nose, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the nose, so it's hard for me to comment on that. Um, but I think Tyson's at a part of time of his career now where in no matter what you say, a lot of the time you've got to have a certain fear factor in when you you know, getting in the build up in your preparation, uh, knowing that you're gonna get tested uh, as regards ability yeah. with a boxer who's in front of you. And uh, I think he's Tyson needs big fights to bring the best out of him. Yeah. That's what I that's what I'm getting at. And I think because he's he's at that level, he's at the top of the tree, so he needs he needs the big fights because other than that he can have these last look lack, last what do you call them, lackluster performances. Yeah, yeah. And and he might not look he might look too bob, but put him in against a Klitschko, a Joshua, a Deontay Wilder, then you'll see the true Tyson out there. Well, I'm gonna throw a curveball at you now and look at it like this. Do you think it was because they were fighting a southpaw? They were very cautious. Uh, I think they're a bit of that in it, but um, I think Tyson has the ability to cope with any stance, puncher, mover. Look what he did with Stevie Cunningham. He had to he had to change his his his, his uh, strategy because he got put on the floor by Stevie Cunningham. Changed his stats. Strategy 
and uh, and he did a number on Stevie Cunningham. I think Tyson is capable of dealing with any style, um, and and and, uh, and maybe coming out on top. But you know, I mean, he's, he's had a lot of fights. He's had a long career as well. So, uh, but he's still fresh. He's still fresh and he's going to be in some major fights, but I think Tyson, I know he's maybe got a multi-fight deal in the building, the Tyson Fury brand, obviously in the States, but there's banana skins there. You think he's overdoing PR a bit? Tyson, Tyson's, Tyson's always done over PR, over, yeah, but overdone it. I'm on about, there's be people giving him a bit of stick today because every time he walk by, Somebody's kid who were picking him up, and do you think that he could, should concentrate more on his training? I mean, he's walking around with a Mexican headband on. Well, he were Apollo Creed at the fight before. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, do you think that uh, he's always going to be like that? Because we, yeah, we know what he's like, don't we? But do you think that sometimes he could still do that, but not have to have cameras there all the time? Listen, the. the the name Mah of the guy is Cassius Clay, Strong yeah. Muhammad Ali, when I watch a, a wrestler called. Gorgeous George. Yeah, he did. Yeah, it's a true now, story. Then. What is what is WWE all about? And and Clay Stroke Ali seeing what this fellow were doing at WWE, which is not real. Yeah. They were going around saying I'm the best. I'm this. He thought I'll have a little bit of that. And Tyson's got a little bit of that in him. He's got that showmanship, pantomime, theatre in him. So yeah, sometimes he overdoes it, but it's it's good value that. I'd, I'd tune in and watch Tyson if he were if he, if he were on Question of Sport. But he didn't overnight. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't overnight, but there were personal reasons why I didn't the other night. Yeah, yeah um, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but uh, I'd, I'd watch Tyson. I mean, look, I'm I'm, I'm pals with the Furies anyway, and and uh, and I, and I want to see him all do well. Um, and so it would just um, one of things. But I'd like to see him in the big fights. Obviously, I'm a boxing fan. But not Otto Walling for 20 quid. <laughs> yeah, but well, you've got Derek Chisora. Uh, Parker. And Parker and, and other fights and you're going pay-per-view. If anybody's pay-per-view is Tyson Fury. Yeah, but yeah. But you'd like to see him in with a bit better quality. I suppose, like. really, we so have to put who, who we like and who we don't like to one side and say, is Tyson Fury a pay-per-view fighter? Yes. Absolutely. Should he have to fight a world title fight or a big name to be pay-per-view maybe just you could put him in with anybody in it's pay-per-view but only just in it really because he, he ain't got a belt has he? No but he's... What do you think about all this Laniel Dennis? I well, believe, yeah, but I agree with it. Oh, I agree with it. Hell, man. You having a laugh? No. No I don't agree with it man. Alright let me just explain to you here. When, when fires get to a certain calibre a certain level, a certain standard. They don't need Maybe, a belt. Yeah. Pacquiao, has he had fights where he hadn't needed a belt? He's had fights where they want a belt online, yeah. Thank yeah. you. So, Tyson has never been beat. Yeah. Tyson was the undisputed, when he, he classes the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Undisputed, yeah. Right. Has he, he had four out of five belts, has, plus ring belt. Has he ever been beat? No. So, what can I say? Yeah, I suppose, yeah, you can throw that what argument. Can you say? So that's the argument on that but side. But what if you, if you had Ruiz, right, you'd be saying, whoa, hang on a minute, he ain't got a belt. We've got the belts. Yeah. Yeah. But until somebody beats, beats Tyson, he can say... He's the best. Right. right. And he's paid people. I'm the man who beat the man. Who was the man? He tell, beat, me, tell me who the man was. Vladimir. Yes. He beat him, didn't he? He beat him. No. And he got the belts. Nobody's beat him. Joshua he, beat him, didn't he? No, nobody's beat Tyson, should I say, since he yeah. won the belts. Yeah. Nah. They all them them belts got dispersed because of what Tyson and his team did in Germany. So in my eyes he is the linear champion. Yeah. And so well, and I'd like to see Tyson fight Ruiz. Would you? That'd be a good little fight, that, like, wouldn't it? Good big fight. Good big fight, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I think I think. Well, so. if he beats That's Joshua, good. you might get your wish. That'd be massive, wouldn't it? That massive. That's why he's big in his setup in Mexico, wouldn't it? With yeah, Mexicans, yeah, yeah. yeah, thinking that. Listen, that I, I think Ruiz can beat uh, can beat Joshua. Mm. 
What do you think about Frank Warren saying last week that Otto Wallin is perfect preparation for Deontay Wilder? Um, Southpaw. I don't get it. And he don't punch against Wilder. Massive punch. I think it was just a bit of salesman pitch. I think Fair. he was doing his double glazing salesman pitch. Uh, he was doing his old fish eyes bit. <laughs> mm, I think he was. He was just selling. Look, I was mm. just speaking to somebody in an article I've done this morning. Frank knows boxing inside out. Oh, I, don't, I don't agree with some of the strokes. They all do, don't they? All but ones, don't they? I, I, I respect him immensely as regards his boxing knowledge uh, and things like that. He's a, he's a very knowledgeable boxing man and he knows yeah. the game inside out. What do you think of Tyson Fury's court where the physician, who people are now saying they've done some research, that he does all the top rank fights? Do you think the physician were frightened? He used to answer calls when I first started doing this channel, have you noticed now he just turns them off? <laughs> You've gone from Vauxhall Conference to the Premier League. I know, yeah. <laughs> but, right, the physician who let Tyson carry on, Tyson said I can see out of it, but he couldn't. He knew it were on top, didn't he, once he, the referee, Tony Weeks, took him over. Now that physician has done a lot of Bob Aaron fights. Does that physician know that... Bob Arum, mate. I mean, you might not be able to answer this, or you might. I don't know, but it's Bob Arum. Yeah. They had a lot of money tied up in Tyson Fury. They, they didn't need a defeat, did they? No. They, need, they needed him to carry on, didn't they? By hook or crook. Do you think it was wrong for him to let him carry on, considering Paul McCloskey's cut against Amir Khan, which was come on, that would that would have true. But I'm going to go back to another one. Ricky Ann, Carlos Mouser. Terrible, Is that the one you promoted? Terrible cuts there. On both eyes? Terrible. Both like... And how did you deal with that? Well, he got a good corner, but the referee allowed him. Some referees are oversensitive, mm. but they allowed him. If you look at them terrible cuts, mm. and then by the say, sixth round, they weren't bleeding. Mm. So, there, there is, it's, it's a fine line. And you know this VAR and all that with mm. Charlie Edwards and... I don't agree with it. I agree. Sometimes I think, yeah, I'm Charlie glad. Edwards got lucky, didn't he? He got lucky. Uh, but I want any British kid to hold on to the world title because yeah. we're British. Yeah. Uh, it's better for all of us, isn't it? Though? And I want Tyson Fury to keep winning because he's British. So uh, I'm glad we got on the end of a. Look, if he'd have lost by a cut, we'd have been. How unlucky was that? Because mm. was the cut by a punch or was it the head? But it wasn't that clear, was it? No. So, it would have punched, it would have punched the replay shot. What it, what it, what it definitely yeah. punched. Definitely a punch, yeah. So, but he kept trying to rub his hand so into if, it. And if the other geezer beats Tyson, is there any excitement the other geezer fighting Deontay Wilder or Andy Ruiz? Is there any excitement in that? No, he walked through Ruiz, wasn't he, Wilder, wasn't he? Blow him away, wasn't he? No, no. Oh. In, in the guy who'll be, who, who Tyson's just beat. Oh, Wallin. Yeah. Wallin. If Wallin would have beat Tyson, I, yeah. mean, I didn't make that very clear, did I? Uh, would there be any excitement in Wallin fighting Deontay or Ruiz or Joshua? No. Not like Tyson. Not like Tyson brings a whole new different yeah. dimension to boxing. Yeah, his numbers and are he's, massive. And he's, does, he's, yeah. he's good for boxing and, um, you know, I mean, like I say, I've, I've always had a good relationship with Furies and. Uh, Peter's a close friend and it's a shame that they're not all still working together but yeah. you know politics are politics and, uh, and, and and that's it but I still admire Tyson as a fighter uh, and I respect what he's achieved. Right, right, I'm going to throw another curveball at you here, there's a rumour doing ra going round that Ch Derek Chisora could be in the mix to fight Tyson in a trilogy because they've had two fights and that fight could be getting put back. If he gets put back because of the cut and Wilder has to take an interim fight in between, they're saying that Chisora could be a mix to fight on BT Sport. What do you think to that? Could that happen? Yeah, it's a good fight. I think that's a good fight, good yeah. Fight, and I think it's a nice payday for Derek. He's probably just about got himself back in the mix. Uh, if you look round, why not a British kid fight get a chance at an, another He's world Zimbabwe, title? He's Zimbabwe, isn't he? He's classic British, though, isn't he? Is he? So, All right, then. He talks with a Cockney accent. Yeah. Uh, he trains up here sometimes. Oh, he's not training up here anymore, is he? 
No, he's, he's left Coldwells, hasn't he? He's gone back to London. Well, I can't see how his hands high enough. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Martin. I'm here! I'm here! Yeah. <laughs> Why didn't he let Ross the Boss? Ross the Boss do it, yeah. Hey, Dennis! Hey, Clint, 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 Clint Ross says I'm on Scrappy. Can you help me out, Dennis? Oh, he didn't, did he, Ross? Oh, I wonder that too, would he, Ross? World number eight, Ross the Boss, Dennis. Oh, we got him. Commonwealth here. champion, English champion. Well, we didn't we did the bad for him, did we? Last seen walking around Medrow with his belts on. <laughs> my wife's beating me up, Dennis. I know, he, he, got, he got punch drunk from his wife, not from fighting anybody. <laughs> she could knock him about. <laughs> eh? We love you really, Ross, don't we, Dennis? He's already right, You've got a soft spot for Ross, haven't a you, little Dennis? One, a little, a little one. one. A little one, a little one. Uh, Right, should Robert Red, we're going to leave the Tyson because we've 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 gone over that now. He won the fight. His cut's got a reel. If he fights Wilder, good luck to him. If he gets put back, he gets put back. I personally, I'm going to go with. I don't think it happens at all ever again. I don't think he fights him. I think they're going to do the best to not have it. That's my opinion. I know for a fact that there's people close to Tyson who don't want him to have the fight. And when you've got people saying, "Well, we're worried." We're already rich. Well, some few more are going to make any difference. Why don't you keep getting millions and knocking and fighting people that you're going to be all right with? Or why do you need to have your brain scrambled against this guy when we've got 50 million bank? Yeah, yeah. You see where I'm coming from? Yeah, I get it. So I'm going to say it don't happen. And if it does, I've got egg on my face. But it's just an opinion. Right, we'll leave Tyson alone, and we're going to go for what we spoke about the other day, but I deleted it. Right, Robert McCracken. Should he be blamed? for not pulling AJ out, because he's come out now and he's opened a can of worms. He said that Joshua, he knew he had a concussion after the third round. Right. Now, people are comparing the Groves one after the first round, because Brock had a concussion, say, didn't he? I'm gonna say that. And he let him carry on. It's or does he know his fighter, and that his fighter can walk through the furnace? Listen, when a, when a kid gets, a knockdown and... You pulled Clinton Woods out against Roy yeah, Jones, but, didn't but you? And he was in the furnace that day, wasn't yeah, he? But he wanted but to carry on, didn't he, Clinton? Yeah, Clinton wanted to carry on, but he was never going to come back no. against Roy Jones. Clinton was spent then, he was like, they were all going to go downhill. Joshua were always capable of coming back, well, he thought that, and it's, and it's a call. Yeah, he got it wrong. If it had been me, maybe I would have pulled him out. Yeah. Uh, but what, you'd have pulled Joshua out, yeah? Maybe, I don't know. Mm. I don't know if I would have. So, like, I think it's just a coping. People, look, we've got we've got such a blame culture in every walk of life in, know, this, yeah. in this country. And everybody wants to blame somebody else for something. Everybody jumps on bandwagon. We've got it in Parliament. We've got it in sport. Um, and it just seems to be people want to slag somebody else off. Why not say, well, he got it wrong that time, but look how many times he's got it right in somebody's career. Like, some people might say, Robert McCracken, he's, he's in a fortunate position, he's got a great position as regards the Institute of Sport, being on Team GB. An old perch. An old perch. But somebody's got to. He's obviously a good trainer, Dennis. Well, he's a good trainer, but is he the best? I don't know. But I like Robert, and somebody's got to, so there's always somebody going to slag somebody else. I won't slag Robert, I just think, well, he's got a fortune position there, but all right, then, who else should have that position? All right, then, well, what about and, this? Then? And he conducts himself in a proper manner, so, like, why not? What about if Robert brings somebody on board, but we don't need to know about it, or have they brought somebody on board and they're just not saying? I do know that Robert... Was that with the training? Yeah. So he's well, they're checking. only training over here. Eh? Back at AJ. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, at the end of the day, right, Robert doesn't do runs with him in the morning. He never did with frogs. He believes you turn up in shape and he deals with the rest of it. He can't babysit you all the time, so why should he babysit you on a run in the morning? That's his opinion. Some some trainers, like Mick Whale, they like to follow Josh in car, don't they? Yeah, yeah. But he, he's hands-on, Mick, isn't he? Other people don't, they think you should... Step to one son, you used to follow their ground, didn't they? <laughs> they didn't realise you were blind, did they? You make... eh? I'm not. I'm just, I'm just no, thinking I'm just... about... I used to race grounds, didn't I? But maybe eh? Mick does it because he doesn't want nobody running into it. Back of Josh when he's running, I don't know, but... If it were me, I'd you know just have I mean? him on a running track. 
No, because sometimes some people like me believe in the, in, in the running. Old school. And like, old hills and yeah, down and all. Yeah, and that kind of and thing. And balance does. and all yeah. that where roads are uneven. So that means you have to concentrate all the time, don't yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. On so a running track, you can just be in your own little world. Yeah, in your comfort zone. So, mm. I don't know, as far as it is, if that gives you an edge mentally, yeah. do it. If, if running on a running treadmill gives you an edge mentally, do it. So you believe Robert McCracken should bring somebody on to add something to the game? Yes, I do. And um, but you don't need to tell everybody about it. Does That's up to him. If he's, yeah, yeah. if he's in charge of his training and conditioning and strategy, boxing strategy. There's fifteen coaches up there, aren't they? They'll be picking somebody's brain. They'll have had a team meeting. Are all them coaches paid by public money? Yeah, they're all paid by public money. Well, even the sports psychologists. Well, that's not fair, is it? But no, that's another conversation. Right. Wilder Fury 2, February. Will it happen? Yes or no? February 22nd. No. No. Will it be politics, the court, and other obstacles? Is that what you think it'll be? Warren's now well, saying. I think they'll be if it, use it. If it happens, they've gone from it is to if. I don't think it'll happen. Right. Okay. So February 22nd. We don't think it's going to happen. Like Brexit. But you, like Brexit. <laughs> Keeps but, getting moved down. But you'll kicking be, the can. But you boxing hardcore fan, fans, followers of my channel. You you have your own opinion on it. But don't book your seats just yet. Uh, right, KSI Logan Paul, you know about that, don't you now? About the um, Then two YouTube. YouTubers who are headlining. Yeah, what, well, on... Um, they've just done 10 million views on one of them playing drums. Now, is that on Dezon? Is yeah, that Dezon, going on, yeah. um, Might be going on Sky Sports. Billy Joe on Undercard. Well, if we if it brings fans into boxing, we're all for it, aren't we? Then? If it does, but you've got to look at. If it doesn't, Eddie Earn ends up with loads of money. Yeah, he's, either way, he is, isn't it? So, <laughs> yeah. Mr. He's rode the storm, aren't he, Mister? Mister Accountant, yeah. Doesn't doesn't chance any of his own money and just owes his money and hand out for a percentage. But he's he's had a good tutor. His dad's built an empire here, and uh, and he's took it on and. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, heavyweight boxing. Father gets more respect off us than son, doesn't he, Dan? Uh, I think so, but, you know, Eddie is You're perfect good, okay. for his father uh, to, as, as the, uh, what is he called, the successor to the throne. Uh, but I don't think they, they'll be in boxing for a long, long time. Yeah. If the numbers don't add up, for example, if Joshua bails out boxing and their shows don't pull the numbers in, will they hang in there and throw their own money or will they bail? They won't throw their own money at it. Right. Now they might do because I've said that, but I don't think they will. They'll never do what I've had to mm. do. And, uh, never had it hard, have they? No. Right. Uh, did you know in 33 year matchroom have only had five world champions? But they've had no from debut. But they've had no world champions that have not been in the GB team and born in Britain. None. Abi Ag were born in Nigeria, yeah. and when he won that belt, they cashed right, in. New Banks. Uh, he started off with somebody else, didn't he? Fighting in New York, didn't he? I, yeah, for him, yeah, yeah. Froch went with them. Bellew, Cleverly, Burns, none of them. No. But they've had forty-six world champions, but only five from debut. And four of them were in GB team, Joshua Yafai, Callum Johnson, Charlie Edwards. Three of them Olympics out of four, and ABI. So when are they going to have a world champion that's not been in GB team where they've had to put money into him? Because the other 30, the other 41 have been other people's, a bit like your Jamie McDonnell and, mm -hmm. and on and on. Somebody else. He's had about 13 of Frank <laughs> <laughs> They've done a bit of cuckooing, haven't they? Ty, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Darren Barker, Eubank, none of them are with them, are they? No, but they um, keep winning, they've got a monopoly there because they've got a platform. Well, they've, they've got, got a keep they've got they've a got treadmill. Down here. Uh, conveyor belt, sorry. Conveyor belt. From uh, GB squad. So everything's paid there by public money, and then they just go, thank you very much, I'll have him off the conveyor belt. So, it's, it's, it's not right, but you know, if they didn't do it, somebody else would be doing it. What American promoters do you get on with, Dennis? Everybody. At the moment, they're working in America. Who do you like and who, who are you fond of? Who do you get on with? I uh, respect Bob Aaron because he's been there and he stood the test of time. Lou DiBella, I've got a lot of affection for because he's a character and he's, and he's 
he's a, he's a, he's a smooth operator and uh, we like Lou Bella, don't we? I like Lou a lot, yeah. I like Lou a lot, and uh, there've been times where we've been going to work together a few times. I've worked with a few of them. Gary Shaw. Um, I can. Gary Shaw. My name's Gary Shaw. Um, now I'm not too fussed, but you know he's had some big fights, and I've had to do business with him. And uh, you don't know him, mate. He's hard work, then. He tried to lift your leg with one show. Tried didn't he? to, but he, he got his own leg lifted by yeah. trying it on, so he, yeah, he, come, yeah. he, come, he, he fell short. But now he. You, you deal with whoever, but sometimes they treat some of British as though we, uh, we, 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 we're not as sharp as them. Sharp as them, but, yeah, yeah. Um, we're sharper He thought he were well in with IBF, didn't he, Gary Shaw, didn't he? Yeah. Thought, didn't he, then? Yeah. Who do you think is an emerging trainer in England at the moment, and who do you rate? Don't for, and don't get this confused with TV trainers. You know the TV trainers that are always in interviews non-stop? Because there's a lot of them that don't, are not like that, isn't there? For example, Shane McGuigan, he doesn't kick arse out no, of the interviews, does no, he? No, but I he think, seems to I think Steffi Ball's top trainer in the country. Steffi Ball? Yeah. Steffi Ball? What, yeah, I think it, yeah, I think he could have made me and you into a world champ. Could he? He's got Dave Allen down there now, doesn't yeah, he? Well, that's it. At drafts. <laughs> uh, now, what do you think? Mark Tibbs, was, Jamie Moore. Yeah, obviously. Shane Jim, Jim, Jim Moore and Mark Tibbs are quality operators, but up here, uh, you know, under our nose, we've got uh, Richard. We've got an emerging talent in Richard Towers who's been there, done everything in in boxing and and in life. Uh, you've got John Fuchs, who's got tremendous experience and he's putting together a, a, a smashing little st stable and he'll be producing some smashing professionals in the next couple of years. So. Uh, watch, watch this space with them two. What do you think to Dominic Ingalls? I'll, I'll go fast forward to this. I mentioned that. No, yeah, but no we, we spoke about it the other day, but I deleted it, didn't I, by accident on the phone. What do you think about Dominic Ingalls' comments we got on Seconds Out about John Fuchs oh, not knowing Kel like he knows him and it ain't just about holding pads and sparring and being technical? Because John Fuchs has well, got a that. reputation of being a pad man, hasn't he? That's right, that uh, it's not just about holding pads. Mm. Now, I can hold the pads, but I've got, well, I've worked on a mentality, and these kids in, 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 this, in this office here who watch one world titles, and I, and I, and I will say now nah, I've had an influence, and I'm not the trainer. Yeah. As a manager and a, and a boxing man, uh, I've got in the ring with him and, and, got in and, and worked on mental. Uh, strategies and things like that so he's right there it's not just about holding pads but the one thing that John Fuchs has got he's got a winner's mentality and uh, he can hold the pads but he, he, he knows he knows how to mentally get somebody uh, in, in fighting fit shape um, mentally as well as, as physically so uh, you watch you watch nobody's handed anything to John Fuchs you no, what, what do you mean, handed what? No, oh, the a, fight, mantle, so. a mantle where he's, he's gone like, he, he's growing something from nothing. Mm. He's come to work with me at our gym and he's growing something from really nothing. Yeah, feel like uh, me. <laughs> and, well, well, like you with his channel, look, look what you're doing with his channel. Yeah. Did, did somebody, did Chris Evans come and say, look, there's Virgin Radio here, here take over that and you've no. got my spot, at, you know, uh, no. good morning. Good morning, Vietnam, you haven't got anything. What's already been no, created? He's good, John, not yeah, no, he's got a platform with our gym, and we've got the experience. And, and, and but it's it's his stamp what he's putting on our gym. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and you mark my words, he will have some good quality kids coming through. Kel doesn't know. Uh, well, I'm going to use a different terminology, but I bet not. Is uh, where he's at at the moment, and he doesn't know where the grass is greener. Now I don't think he fights again himself. Well, maybe not, and it might be a good thing because I think that kids like. Uh, got his shoes and uh, yeah. I wish him well uh, because he's a Sheffield lad and I've, I've never had a wrong word with Kel. The, 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 the perception this last couple of days is after Dominic's interview is that John Fuchs isn't a strong enough personality to tell Kel what to do in gym about his weight and things like that and Dominic is a more of a taskmaster whereas John Fuchs is more of a technical trainer. A bit like Robin Reed, he does pad seminars, doesn't he? But it, once your trainer goes home at night, that's it. Whereas Dominic Ingham, he's, mo he's on the case, isn't he? He makes up for it in other areas because he's not best on pads and that kind of thing. 
So, and he knows about nutrition because he's been a bodybuilder, hasn't he? And that. But I don't know, it, that's the perception that John Fuchs is not a big enough personality to handle Kel. I don't know. But, but I, I think I, I, I disagree. I, I disagree because I, I've, but I'm I've asking, been around. We, obviously, I'm I'm about about opinion. Opinion. I like I know you do. I want to feel good to be with Kel because it's better for everybody, isn't it? He's it's happy better, then, isn't he? No, Kel's coming, we're always coming to end of his career anyway when he, when he joined John. Yeah. So, like, uh,